This story is about a small village in the Netherlands on the coast of Zeeland named Westenschauven. The story is of how this village once caught a mermaid. Yes, you heard that right, a mermaid. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about a story of a village that caught a mermaid. Before we begin, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more myths and folk tales country stories. This folk tale is about an old legend from the 15th century where a fisherman from a small village caught something unexpected. The encounter was when the fisherman went out to go fishing in the North Sea. He went along with his normal routine where he threw in his net looking to get a full net of fish. While he was pulling up his net, he noticed that it was heavier than usual. He pulled the net in his boat and saw that he caught something that looked like a human with a fishtail. At that moment, he knew it was a mermaid. He opened the net and pulled her out with force. He and his fellow fishermen were very curious and started to inspect her body closely. They planned to bring her ashore for everyone else to see, so they started moving back to the shore. At this exact point, a merman emerged above the waves and requested the fishermen to free her immediately. He knew that she would surely die outside the water. Even though he ordered them to give her back to the ocean, they did not seem to be interested in releasing such a unique catch. The merman followed them back to the shore so that he could appeal to the town folk, threatening them that he would destroy the village. But even after that, they still ignored his threats. Instead, they responded by throwing rocks at him. The merman had enough and punched the waves to foam. While all the waves were slowly turning into foam, he also said something in the form of a verse. It then was clear that the small village of Avestenshelven was cursed by the merman. Soon after the curse was spoken, the weather changed drastically. The harbor started filling up with silt. This affected the rich families who started to become poor. The silt started to drift into town. It destroyed almost entire buildings in the process. Soon enough, the whole town was covered in sand and all that was left of the small village was a lonely little tower protruding from the sand. The story is not unique to just this small village. Instead, there are several villages in Zeeland that seem to have met the same fate and tell stories that are similar to the one of Westenschauven. The question is whether the story that originated here spread to these other parts as well. Of course, we can't certify that it was here only where the story originated, but inhabitants do like to believe so. Another town called Scheftinge almost has an identical story, except for the fact that the sea broke through their dikes and sank their city beneath the ocean waves. Other stories reportedly could be found in Vire, Bat, and Reimersval. Where the mythical creature comes from is an interesting turn of events as well. In folk stories, a mermaid is a marine creature with the head and upper body of a female human and the tail of a fish. Mermaids surprisingly appear in the folklore of many cultures worldwide, including Europe, Asia, and Africa, which is a rarity in itself. Mermaids, unlike how they're represented in fairy tales, are not so friendly at all. Many cultures associate them with perilous events such as floods, storms, shipwrecks, and drownings. In other folk traditions, they can be benevolent or beneficent, bestowing boons or falling in love with humans. The male equivalent of the mermaid is the merman, also a familiar figure in folklore and heraldry. Although traditions about the sightings of mermen are less common than those of mermaids, they are generally assumed to coexist with their female counterparts. The male and the female collectively are sometimes referred to as merfolk or merpeople. The conception of mermaids in the West may have been influenced by the sirens of Greek mythology which were originally half bird-like, but came to be pictured as half fish-like in the Christian era. Historical accounts of mermaids, such as those reported by Christopher Columbus during his exploration of the Caribbean, are probably the only time a historic figure has alluded to the existence of one. Then, there is always the explanation that these may have been sightings of manatees or similar aquatic animals. While there's no evidence that mermaids exist outside folklore, reports of mermaid sightings continue to the present day. A 9th century physiologus described the siren as bird-like, but supplied an illustration that was mermaid-like. The physiologus is a moralistic Christian text written or compiled in Greek by an unknown author somewhere in Alexandria. Confusion of how a mermaid looked was thought by some to be the influence of Teutonic myth, later expounded in literary legends of Lorelei and Undine, though a dissenting comment is that parallels are not limited to Teutonic culture. 
Teutonic myths are found in the order of brothers of the German House of St. Mary in Jerusalem, commonly known as the Teutonic Order. The siren became pictorialism as a mermaid and was later textually described to match medieval bestiaries. These siren mermaids depicted what was called second family bestiaries, typically held an eel in hand, though sometimes also a musical instrument as in classical art, or the mirror and comb as a symbol of vanity. The mermaid holding a comb and mirror, which is symbolic all over Europe, derives from bestiaries that describe the siren as a vain creature requiring those accessories. The lore of sirens has been compared to that of the mermaids. They also have Slavic cousins by the name of Rusalka, etc. Due to the commonality of having a human voice and the penchant for seducing sailors, etc. to their doom, the classical siren of Homer used their beautiful song, to be more specific, as their instrument of enticement, and this aspect has been transferred to the mermaid in some cases. Greek mythology early on had other creatures described as part women and part fish, namely the sea monsters Skyla and Charybdis. Though Skyla's violence is contrasted with the siren's seductive ways by certain classical writers, the Skyla and Charybdis lived in the neighboring regions to the siren's domain. A sporadic example of sirens depicted as mermaids comes in early Greek art of the 3rd century BC and thus be possibly explained as the people have added to the siren myth with the Skyla and Charybdis episode. The Skyla was also part of the mythology of the Etruscan civilization of ancient Italy that perished in the 6th century BC. They had a different version of the Skyla, which was a twin-tailed mermaid. Some have argued that the much later European myth of the Melusin mermaid was traceable to the two-tailed Skyla of the Etruscans. Depictions of entities with the tails of fish but the upper bodies of human beings appear in Mesopotamian artwork from the old Babylonian period onwards on cylinder seals. These figures are usually mermen and called Kalulu, but mermaids do occasionally appear. The name for the mermaid figure may have been Kultur, meaning fish woman. Such figures were used in Neo-Assyrian art as protective figures and were shown in both monumental sculptures and small protective figurines. Athargatis was the chief goddess of northern Syria in classical antiquity. Titius, a Greek physician and historian, used the name Derketo for her, and the Romans called her Dia Syria, or in one word, Diasura. Primarily, she was the goddess of fertility, but as the mistress of her city and people, she was also responsible for their protection and well-being. She has been found depicted as a fish with a woman's head on a coin of Demetrius III. The mermaids of Greek and Roman mythology may perhaps have been brought from the Middle East, possibly transmitted by Phoenician mariners. These were from the ancient region along the eastern coast of the Mediterranean that corresponds to modern Lebanon, with adjoining parts of modern Syria and Israel. Indeed, in Phoenicia or Syria, there was a mermaid goddess known as Darceto to Greek writers, with her cult centered at Ashkelon where her transformation myth is localized, according to information provided by Persian defector Titius in the 5th century BC. Later, Lucian in the 2nd century AD wrote a book on the Syrian goddess based on his fieldwork, and though he saw the goddess and equated it to Heros from the Greek mythology, it was said to be represented as mermaid-like in some parts of Phoenicia. Her grand statue was entirely human in her holy city. This Phoenician-Syrian myth is possibly traceable to an earlier Mesopotamian myth. The Phoenician-Syrian myth contains the legend of the goddess Derceto's daughter, Queen Semiramis, who had as her husband a man by the name of Oannius. This Oannius is thought by some to be an equivalent of the Mesopotamian divine figure Oannius, identifiable as one of the Apkalu, who were seven sages described as fishmen in cuneiform texts. While the Oannius was a servant of the water deity Ea, Having gained wisdom from the god, English writer Arthur Waugh understood Oannius to be equivalent to the god Ea and proposed that surely Oannius had a fish-tailed wife and descendants, with Atargatus being one deity, thus descended through the mists of time. Sometime before 546 BC, Milesian philosopher Anaximander hypothesized that mankind had sprung from an aquatic animal species, a theory that is sometimes called the aquatic ape theory. He thought that humans who begin life with long infancy could not have survived otherwise. There are also naturalist theories on the origin of the mermaid, 
postulating they derive from sightings of manatees, dugongs, or even seals. Still another theory, which is also tangentially related to the aforementioned aquatic ape theory, is that the supposed mermaids of folklore were actually human women who trained over time to be skilled divers for things like sponges and thus spent a lot of time in the sea as a result. One proponent of this theory is British author William Bond, who has written several books about it. There you have it, guys. The story of the mermaid who was caught by a small sleepy village in the Netherlands. Thank you for watching. If you loved this story, then hit the like and subscribe button to follow us for more kind like videos. Press the bell icon to stay alerted for more videos about mythical stories about every country.